If you talk to my undergraduates, you know, they'll, they'll say, well, you know, what do we need cash for unless we're buying marijuana? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Maybe everyone should have a credit card of some kind issued by our jolly green giant. Cashless society is here. It's so rare for you to be pulling a loony, a toonie, or a bill out of your wallet these days. More and more people are going cashless, and a pandemic just reminded us that germs are everywhere. So you might think the cash is about to go broke. But ditching dollar bills comes at such a high price for those who can least afford it that there's a movement to ban stores from telling people your paper money's no good here. Here's why. On September 23rd, 2009, Sweden was stunned by the kind of cinematic heist we typically only see in the movies. Masked men armed with a Kalashnikov landed a stolen helicopter on the roof of a cash depot. They smashed the skylight, shimmied down a ladder, and dumped an estimated 4.5 million bucks worth of cash into big sacks, while accomplices helped the getaway by planting fake bombs near police helicopters. Seven people were later convicted of involvement in the plot, but no one ever found the money. The so-called Vastberga heist was just one in a series of high-profile robberies in Sweden, of banks, stores, even buses, all involving cash that helped convince the whole country that, hey, maybe we shouldn't be leaving so much cash money lying around. A decade later, it's almost all gone. Just 1% of the Swedish economy is circulating as cash. The glory days of Grand Theft Ikea are well and truly behind us. Since we, uh, we don't have any cash in the facilities, we're a very uh, boring target for uh, a crook. I mean, you can still try to rob the place, but whatever you get, you gotta assemble yourself. Sweden, the country too boring for crime, is hardly alone. In the US, debit cards overtook cash as Americans' favorite way to pay in 2018. And that was before the pandemic sent cash circulation into a tailspin. The CDC told grocery stores to encourage customers to use touchless payment options. In the early weeks of the crisis, the number of cash withdrawals from ATMs plummeted 25%. The unprecedented surge in the demand for contactless payment has also shown outstanding performances for major companies offering cashless payment methods like Apple, Square, and PayPal. Payment platforms and credit card companies reap the rewards. Square claims that thanks to the pandemic, the shift away from cash payments in 2020 was so fast, it would have normally taken three non-pandemic years. Visa said the number of tap-to-pay transactions at places like grocery stores and pharmacies increased by more than 100% in 2020 compared to the previous year. The irony here is that studies have shown the chance of actually catching COVID from cash is pretty low compared to being breathed on while you wait in line to pay for your Snapple with literally any kind of currency at all. Of course, cash does have a filth factor. According to one study, the majority of American dollars have traces of cocaine, which is disgusting or awesome, depending on who you're talking to. So I guess going cashless could be seen as a way to avoid getting a contact high by making it rain. Well, that's not working very well, hold on. Many people, including over 80% of American millennials, believe it's just a matter of time before the world goes totally cash-free. Companies that stand to benefit have helped foster that vision by, for example, portraying anyone with the nerve to pay in cash as a hopeless loser screwing it up for the rest of us. Just look at that cash dweeb. Credit card companies and banks love the idea of a cashless future because less money exchanging hands means more transactions that they can get a piece of. They don't get anything from that cash in your wallet. Card companies don't disclose how much they earn from fees globally. But in 2019, Americans swiping their credit cards resulted in $93 billion worth of fees. And card companies aren't exactly shy about drumming up fresh business. Back in 2017, Visa CEO said the company was focused on putting cash out of business. The following year, they offered 50 small businesses $10,000 each if they committed to not accepting cash. And if credit card companies decide they want to make more money from your purchases, 
they could always just go ahead and increase their transaction fees. In the land of the free, there's no limit to the fees they can charge. Right now, it's around 2%, which might not seem like a lot, until you consider the European Union caps fees at 0.3%. Think of what else you could do with that extra 1.7%. It's not like taking cash is a free ride for businesses. Staff have to count it, hand over change, break a 20 when you need to feed the parking meter even though the sign in the window says we don't make change for the parking meter. And someone's gotta pay for those armored trucks to pick up the money, which seem to get broken into with alarming frequency. At least, according to the movies I watch. Don't move! So, with all this momentum to go cashless, health, convenience, incentives from the card guys, it's no surprise that a lot of places have stopped taking bills. According to Square, as much as 18% of companies that use its payment platform have gone cash free. But there's a big problem here. Ditching cash involves some assumptions about who your customers are and what they have. Paying for things by tapping your phone or your credit card involves two things synonymous with disposable incomes. In other words, going cashless means keeping people out who have money, but not the right kind of money. An idea that strikes a lot of people is kind of fucked up, including this guy, Philadelphia City Councilman William Greenlee, who helped make Philly the first city in the US to demand stores accept cash in 2019. Telling people who do not have the ability to have credit that you can't buy a basic product is not treating people fairly. Six states plus Washington DC have either passed or introduced laws banning businesses from refusing to take cash. New York City is handing out $1,000 fines for the first violation and 1,500 bucks for the next one. And members of Congress have even discussed the possibility of a national ban. For some of them, the issue's personal. I'm a congresswoman who's been unbanked. I've been that person who's had to rely on cash to get by. Too many of my constituents remain unbanked or underbanked, and this is an equity issue. It turns out our glossy, cashless future, enabled by the move fast and break things mentality of Silicon Valley, hasn't bothered to account for anyone who's low income, homeless, undocumented, or who doesn't have a bank account, which is known as being unbanked. As of 2019, around 7 million American households, 5.4% of the country, were unbanked. And that figure becomes even more pronounced when you break it down by race. 13.8% of black households and 12.2% of Hispanic households are unbanked. Banks have fees. That's more than some people can afford. Most banks are happy to waive those fees just so long as you have a minimum balance in the account at all times, which can be over $1,000. Now, banks are also happy to let you withdraw more cash than you have in your account, but there's a fee for that too. These overdraft fees cost consumers more than $11 billion every year, which basically means banks make a bunch of money from people being poor. If you're one of the 40% or more of American families who are living paycheck to paycheck, it's not so easy to just leave a little bit of money in this app and a little bit of money in that app and a little on this card and a little on that. On top of all the fees that make it pretty unappealing to open up a cash account when you're scraping together a living, there's the issue of accessing that cash. In New York City, neighborhoods of color have an average of one bank per 10,000 residents, less than a third of what you find in majority white neighborhoods. And banks have been closing their branches and ATMs across the country. Undocumented immigrants, by definition, don't have the documents they need, like a government ID or utility bill, to open a bank account in the first place. In other words, declaring your store officially cashless is another way of saying that without a certain level of privilege, your money's no good here. Specifically, the kind of privilege that gives you easy access to credit cards, banks, government issue IDs, and utility bills with your name on them. Stuff that's practically free to those who can afford it, and very expensive to those who can't. Going totally cashless is a bit like hanging up a sign that says, you must have at least this much privilege to shop here. We might wanna think twice before we start hanging those up all over the country. 